Um, there's this inherited fear of failing in your career, your major, your degree, your business, uh, moving up in Dutch Rose management, whatever it may be for yourself. Um, what's your one-liner for just taking the leap and going for it? You know, it's, it's, you know, I hate repeating myself, but like I get it and I, I'll do it until the day I die. Who are you afraid of? Like, what? When you get fired from Dutch Bros tomorrow, right? Right? Like, when you, right? Which I can see is pretty much gonna happen, right? <laughs> like, when that happens, right, when that happens, like, what are you scared of? Like, what, your dad's gonna be like, I told you you're a loser? Or like, or like your girl's like, I can never trust you, I can never marry you? Like, what? I, it is a woo, like, what? Like, tell me the thing, like, what? Like, what? This is why I'm petrified of fucking eighth place trophies. If you grow up where everybody gets an eighth place trophy, you're actually scared of losing, and then you're fucked because losing is real. I love, I swear on my fucking kid's health, I'm obsessed with losing. I fucking love losing. I love losing because I know exactly what you're thinking about my loss, and I can't wait to stick it in your fucking face when I come back. I remember once my grandma said that I was lazy because after seven hours of fucking dragging wood in my parents' backyard, I was like, I need a break because she's old school Russian gangster. And I remember laying there and her drilling me and me thinking to myself, I'm gonna fucking stick it to you, grandma, like nobody's ever, like, like I like losing. Like when the Yankees and Rangers won their championships, I stopped rooting for them. People like laugh at me like, you're a Jets fan? I love being a Jets fan. I'd hate being a Seahawks fan because you won, it's over, the climb's over. So like, that's it. Like, like, what are you fucking fearful of? Like, your sister making fun of you because she's got a better job? Fuck her. That's my answer. Like, cool. Like, don't forget my friends, you could be winning 28 nothing at halftime and lose. So your older sibling that's got a great fucking job could be a crackhead next year. Could. Could, because he's had a whole facade the whole time fucking trying to suck your parents' dick, right? And, and he's actually insecure inside and something went wrong at the office and he starts fucking doing coke on the side. Like, guys, don't you understand how this is played? This is real, I'm being serious. Who gives a shit if you're losing when you're in college? You got 80 fucking years to stick it to them, bro. Yeah. Thank you. I'd actually, I'd actually have a whole different new concept. I recommend fucking up on purpose. I'm being serious. It's so much better to like eliminate expectations from the get. Then you're playing with house money. If you're scared of other people's opinion, fuck up on purpose, then everybody thinks you suck shit, then it's all upside. I'm, you know, everybody's like, like, I'm telling you, I'm not joking. By the way, Actually, you know what's fucking weird? This is what's fun about like talking. Like, maybe that's what happened to me. Maybe what happened to me was because I got D's and F's and every teacher and every friend's parent thought I was gonna be a loser because I, how many people are 40 or older? Raise your hands. Good. So for the few of us in here, education was the only thing. There was no entrepreneurship in the 80s. That wasn't a conversation. I didn't even know what the fucking word meant. And the first time I heard it, it meant that you were kind of like a loser like and didn't do anything. Like, like. Maybe that's what happened to me. Maybe the advice I'm giving you, man, is based on what happened to me, which was because I sucked so bad at school and that's the only way that we were graded back then that all expectations were goose egg for me and all of it was upside, so I was liberated to play in the fucking machine and just went on straight fucking offense and fucking won. So go fuck up. How do you make level-headed decisions all the time? And if you do, first of all, and if you, if I, you do, how I, do you? I feel historically I've been really good at it because I'm completely unemotional. Mm -hmm. It's and, business. Okay, well then probably it answers the next part of my question that if the decision you make doesn't turn out to be the right decision. I move on. How do you move on? Like how do you not dwell By on not that? By not overjudging myself. All right, well that's good, thank you. I and mean, and let's play it out. Like, what are you gonna beat up yourself the rest of the year? Yeah. Like, no. to me, life is about alternatives. 
I make decisions super fast. I make decisions because the speed of the decision is more valuable than the debate because if I'm right, I'm right. And if I'm wrong, who gives a fuck? I'm not sitting, I'm sitting up here as a byproduct of getting Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat, LinkedIn, right. I spent a lot of time on Peach, on Social Cam, on Vero, on Viddler. Those didn't work out. When you make decisions and you don't dwell, the net outpaces. Everybody here is trying to, in the world, what you're asking is you're trying to be three for three, right? You wanna be three and oh. Three right decisions, no wrong decisions. I'm trying to be 118 to 92. Got it? Let me explain. Everybody's looking for perfection because perfection is the disguise of insecurity. I'm just doing because I'm not worried about the ramifications. As long as you're not dead or out of business, no mistake is a big deal. Where this goes is people being worried about judgment. See, I like it best when things look bad. I'm a wartime general in a world of peacetime generals. That's an entrepreneur. That's why I'm scared people are getting into this when they're not. You starting a business with that being a top concern is a humongous vulnerability. Doesn't mean you can't get over it. I'm just trying to make sure during this era of everybody being a fucking entrepreneur, that entrepreneurs need to really communicate what it's about so that other people don't just go into it because it looks good, because it's really hard to be a zebra when you're a fucking penguin. How do you think is the best way for us to get over the fear of failing at this? Because it's kind of taking a leap. We're, in a, we're currently an in-house marketing department for a 21 chain retail store. I think you guys we're need, if leap. you guys are taking the leap, you guys are rounding the troops and saying, screw this place, we're going to do our thing. You've got to first decide, here are the ways to do it. You do the emotional and the practical when you take a leap. The practical is, all. how many of you are doing it? Three. The three of you have to figure out, worst case scenario, nothing goes well, how long can you survive on your savings or you're willing to be entrepreneurial ghetto? Got it? Yeah. So the it. three of you need to sit in a circle and you go, India, how long can you last? And India says, 18 months. Andrew, how long can you last? Four months. Andy, how long can you last? Two years. We know we're only as strong as our weakest link. Goddamn Andrew's only got four months. So we have to talk about that. Number one, do you think that the three of you can go without any sales for a year? Yeah, I, well the good thing is we have investors from the company that got behind us and they're like, you kinda have a, we kinda have a safety net a little bit if it, if it fails. So great. You know. So then, so it, sound, so, it sounds like, so it sounds like you created the practical version and now you just have to make the emotional version. Too many people, and you know I've been talking about this, fake entrepreneurship. If you're scared to make the jump, you still have entrepreneurial tendencies, you're not an entrepreneur yet, it's why you worked in a company yeah. in the first place. You just gotta make the jump or not, it's like swimming. You either jump in the pool and you go, or you don't, the end. Yeah, definitely, and then when, so like, that, that's kind of my fear, because you know, we're just starting this, it's, it's kind of new frontier, you know, and. Dude, you, you know, can't be, dude, stuff. don't be scared. Nothing's gonna happen. You can always go back to the goddamn job. Yeah. I mean, what is, what's gonna happen? Yeah. Like, people are gonna make fun of you? Like, your mom's gonna say you, you failed? Like, who gives a shit? Go try it, doesn't work, <laughs> and go. Don't care what other people think. It's the only reason you're scared. Yeah. Whether it's your spouse, your partner, your child, your mother, you, you, whoever it is, eliminate those voices, listen to yourself, and know that if you fail, you go back into it and nothing bad will happen. But if you win, it's the greatest shit that ever happened. When I was nine years old and opened the door for an elderly woman at a McDonald's, she reacted as if I won the Nobel Peace Prize. Good mom. What my mom did was super smart. She overreacted on everything that I was doing that was a good human trait and she held me accountable for things that didn't matter, like grades. She didn't let me complete, like she punished, I got punished four times a year, every year, from the time I was in third grade until my senior year of high school. Literally. I would get my report card, I would take it out of the mail and flush it down the toilet, this is true, which would buy me a week. Then my sister finally broke down and would tell on me. 
I'd be punished for two weeks, no TV, no Nintendo, and then we'd reset. My mom built huge self-esteem in me, and I feel like the biggest reason I am who I am today to everybody is because I feel so guilty and so grateful for what she did for me that I want to do it for everybody else, which is, guess what? You suck at a ton of shit. Good. So does everybody else. You're also probably pretty fucking rad at something. Try as many things as possible until you figure out what you're rad at and you like, and go fucking do that for the rest of your life and stop giving a fuck about everybody else. <laughs>